Hi guys, and very welcome to Mentor, yet another video podcast. I hope you're all doing fantastic. So, today on the podcast, I have something that I have um, been getting quite a lot of questions about. And uh, I think it's going to be a quite good podcast. Make sure you stay on to the end. Um, I'll make it worth your while. We are going to talk about pilot rosters. Okay. I am going to talk a little bit about my opinions on what's important in a roster, what kind of different rosters uh, that exists out there. And uh, as always, guys, these are going to be my opinions. So they might not match your opinions or they might not match someone else's opinion. But I'm going to give you my two cents of um, how a roster should look and what's important for it. And towards the, the end of the podcast, I'm going to show you an example of a roster from a Middle Eastern company who's flying long haul, and also from a short to medium haul operator that, in Europe. So I'll show you exactly what the differences are, and then it's up to you guys to decide whether, what, what you prefer and what you think of it. So, um, rosters can be of different types. Uh, a lot of airlines have um, rosters which are not fixed, which means that you might be working for three days and then you might be two days off and then you might be working for five days and you might be three days off and it's rolling um, around like that. So you would normally in those kind of companies you would have a, um, a set roster for the next couple of weeks, one or two weeks and then it will be planned further on. So at least you know what to plan for the next couple of weeks. That's not going to change but in the weeks after that it might change. Okay. Um, the other type is the fixed roster pattern, which is becoming increasingly popular in the low fare airlines, in the short and medium haul airlines um, around the world. Then you will have a roster pattern that is exactly the same week on, week off. Okay, So you might be working <clears throat> in, in my airline, for example, that I'm working for at the moment. We're working five days working, followed by four days off followed by five days working, followed by four days off, and it's rolling exactly the same pattern throughout the year. Um, the benefits, the way that I see it, the benefits of a fixed roster pattern is that even though you don't know exactly what you're doing on the days that you're working, uh, at least you know exactly what days you will have off. And uh, that might not sound very important to you in the beginning of your career, but as you get a family, as you, um, you know, grow into a, a kind of lifestyle where you need to be able to plan your life in a more precise manner, uh, it will become increasingly important for you guys to know when you can you know, plan dinners and when you can follow the kids on trips or whatever it might be that's connected to school or family life. You've come to notice that most of our society is planned around weekends. Um, and as an airline pilot, you might be working on weekends. Which is why, in my opinion at least, it's extremely important to know what weekends you will have off in order to, you know, just plan your life, basically. So these are one of the things that when you get into the industry, you don't really realize how much of an impact this can have on your life quality. Um, a, a roster pattern which is not fixed means that you won't know if you're going to be working on Christmas, for example, or Easter or New Year's Eve until basically two weeks prior to it. Uh, and that has a profound impact on how you plan things with your family. Um, so my personal opinion is that a fixed roster pattern is always superior to a non-fixed roster pattern, um, simply from a life quality point of view. Okay. Then you have things uh, like the ability to uh, bid for roster changes. So bigger airlines um, tend to have a system in place where you can bid for what flights you want to do or, and possibly also which days you want to fly uh, and as your seniority grows as in as you've been longer and longer in the business or in the company you will have more and more priority which means that if you've been a long time in a company you might be able to almost set your roster like you want it that has uh, that's very good if you manage to get into that uh, situation it is very good because it not only does it mean that you you, you can plan more or less when you're going to be off, but you're also going to be able to choose more or less destinations and things like that. That was more common back, you know, if we're looking back 15, 20 years, less common now. Uh, when it comes to what we actually fly, which routes we fly, I get a lot of questions about this. Um, generally speaking, you have very little to say about what routes you're going to fly. 
Um, especially if you're flying short to medium haul, they will just assign flights to you, to whatever destinations it might be. But it also doesn't matter very much, because if you're working in the kind of company that I am working in, it means that you are starting your duty at your home base and you're finishing your duty at your home base. So it doesn't really matter if you're going to fly to Paris or Frankfurt or London or Stockholm or whatever it might be, because you're always going to end up in the same place anyway. Um, makes a little bit more difference if you are planning, if you're flying for a long haul company, you might like certain destinations better than others. In that case, if there's a bidding system in force, um, it is very beneficial because you might get those destinations. As you stay longer in the company, you might have more and more input into what destinations you fly to. But we're going to have a look at that now. So let's have a look now. I'm going to put up a uh, roster example from a Middle Eastern long haul company here on my side. And uh, I should say as well that this sample is about three years old. Um, this company in particular has increased its flying quite a bit since this roster was, uh, was released. So they're flying more now than they were flying back then. But it's still uh, a good example of how it might look. So this pilot um, is a first officer. And uh, if you look at the top there, uh, you see that the, uh, it's labeled with the days of the month. Um, it's uh, also labeled with um, what the first point there is what report time this um, pilot has. So the first flight he's going to do on this roster starts at 13.45 and these times are in local time. And uh, that's why this is going to look a little bit strange because it's in local time both at the uh, station of, of uh, departure and destination. And of course if they're flying around the globe local times are changing quite a bit. So if we look at the top there, um, they're flying from Dubai. So the report time is at 13.45. The departure time is at 14.45 local. And they are arriving in London Gatwick at 18.25. He's flying the 777, or she's flying the 777. And the end of duty is 18.55. Duty time in total is nine hours 10. And uh, the block time, which is the time from when the aircraft starts pushing back to when it pulls up on the stand, it's seven hours and 40. And then it goes down, you see that they're staying uh, until the next day, and then they're flying back to Dubai in this case. And then there's a little plus there, which means that the time of arrival back to Dubai, there's 700, uh, is the next day. So it's not actually the Thursday the 4th, it's on Friday the 5th. Then it's followed by three days off, and then he has a little bit of ground school, followed by a flight to Manchester and back, one day off, then there's more training, so it's this recurrent training, and then they're flying to Frankfurt and back, two days off, then they're doing a long um, kind of a, a you know multiple flights followed onto each other where they fly from Dubai to Singapore, from Singapore to um, uh, that's in Australia, um, back to Singapore and then back to Dubai again. That's a five day um, flight basically. So they're going on the 22nd and they're coming back on the 26th. Um, in the afternoon, so the four day actually. Um, but these are kind of, you know, this is an example of a long haul roster. So you can see that there, it's mixed with three days off, one day off, two days off, and in the entire month it looks like uh, this pilot has about seven days off, right? Now, if we instead look at a roster from a short to medium haul operator, which I'm putting up now, um, <clears throat> this pilot, uh, as you can see already, there's much more flights for this pilot, so they're flying more destinations. And the days also seem to be a bit longer. The first day there on the 23rd of November this year, actually, uh, is going from Hahn to, um, to um, Palma, and then back to Hahn, and then from Hahn to Cagliari and then back to Hahn again. That's a very long day. It's, uh, it's a close to 11 hour duty day, uh, followed by four days off. And then they uh, followed by another five days working. So no standbys, five days working, fairly long days as well. But the difference here is, and what you have to remember, is that in the case of long haul pilot, 
they're also changing time zones, which means that even though their duty time might be shorter than the short and medium war pilot, it's going to wear on their system in a completely different way. And I'm, I'm quoting one, one of my friends who's working for uh, another long haul operator and saying that it, it's extremely tiring. So even though the short haul pilot in this example is flying a lot more, it's actually more duty time, more touch, uh, more landings, more takeoffs, more um, turnaround. Since he or she is staying in the same time zone and is able to get a good night's sleep in between each flight and also, you know, four days off every eight days rolling, it means that they will be less tired. Even though they're flying less, they will still be less tired because the, the, uh, the jet lag, the time change, um, is extremely tiresome for the, for the body as such. So, uh, continuing down, you can see that this roster example has um, five days, or actually one week, of uh, white indicated flights. These are fixed, which means that they will not change. And then after that, it goes, uh, says the, uh, the rest of this roster is planned and goes into yellow, which means that this is an indication of what he or she might fly, but it might change because it's just in the planning stage from a rostering point of view. Um, so, and there's also a bit of standbys coming up at the end there of this pilot's roster. So uh, as you can see, um, it's, you know, the long haul pilot is flying less, but has much more time changes in their roster and less of a of consistency in the roster. The short and medium haul pilot is doing a lot more flights, uh, is actually doing longer days when they're working, but they have a fixed roster pattern and they are coming and they're leaving from the same place as they're coming home to every night, which means that they're staying in their own bed. Now, it might not look, if you look at it from a experience point of view, a lot of people say, well, wow, I want to go and I want to see exotic beaches and I want to fly all over the world. But as you can see on the roster pattern from the um, from long haul pilot, they're not staying very long at each destination. And when they're staying, they're expected to be resting. So yes, as a long haul pilot, you will see the world, you will fly around the world. Um, you will also have to, to kind of adapt yourself to uh, the time changes. There's different ways of doing this. I know some of my uh, friends are trying to adapt to the local time so that they can do as much as possible when they reach the, reach the destinations. But some of them are also just trying to stay at whatever time zone it is in their home country so that when they get back home to their families, they won't be completely knackered. But that means that they're gonna have to sleep during daytime when they're in Rio de Janeiro or in Los Angeles or whatever it might be. So it's more complicated than you might think um, but these at least, at least now you've seen a, an example of how the rosters might look in two different types of operators. Now there's shitloads of other types of rosters out there and there's probably other things to take into account as well that I haven't mentioned here. But uh, feel free to ask questions about this and uh, as always share this video on um, Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter if you like it. Uh, give me your comments and I hope you'll have a fantastic day and I'll see you next time.